Hey there, it's Kate with Tested, and these are my favorite things of 2020. First up, I have some shellac. Now this is by Zinzer, that is the brand that I always go to. Normally it is used for, you know, staining or putting on wood, giving it a nice color. It comes in many different shades. I go for amber, it tends to give this really nice, pretty amber color. I almost never just use it on wood. Sometimes, of course, that is the case, but usually it's when I'm trying to fake a look, uh, especially wood. So if you remember, I believe we did a video on model behavior about making imitation wood on foam core, painting it on there, building it up. It has a really nice way of getting darker in places where it's thicker, so it can really add some looks without having to work too hard. Also, it can give you a bit of a dimensionality with it, so it creates the wood grain as you brush it on. I also like to dip castings in it, especially things like skeletons, skulls, has a way of finding all those nooks and crannies and giving a lot of depth to it. I'm also a little weird. I love the way it smells. It's kind of sweet. I know it's probably not very good to say. You probably shouldn't be sniffing it, just saying. Um, but you can find this at any hardware store. It's very common. It's relatively inexpensive. It also comes in a smaller can if you don't need this much. I will say this tends to last me quite a while. So it's a great handy thing. I use this a lot. All right, next up, I have glazing and spot putty. This is by Bondo brand, so it should be pretty uh, familiar to anybody who's ever used a spot filler or any kind of a Bondo product. The thing that's different about this than say the big can of Bondo is that it comes pre-mixed. There's no activating necessary. You don't have to mix in the, the special white stuff to it, but it is also meant for much smaller applications. Now, whereas Bondo, you could have a big dent in the side of something and just really spackle that in there and fill it up. This is a lot more used for things like pinholes, tiny cracks, little undulations in the surface of something. Uh, if you tried to fill something too deep with it, you're gonna get some cracking, some flaking. It's just not gonna be very sturdy but this is so good for really slowly building up a surface. If you've got a casting that came out and it has lots of little holes in it, this is exactly what you wanna be using. It's for delicate work. And something to keep in mind is that this dries extremely quickly because it is air dry. So only put the smallest amount you could possibly need down on your work surface and then very quickly try to get it into where you wanna go. Uh, just like regular Bondo, if you can uh, take a razor and start to clean up the surface before it dries completely, that's going to help you a lot on the back end. Otherwise, you can still go back in and sand it off when you're done. But again, relatively inexpensive. I would say this lasts me a pretty long while, but once you open it, your shelf life starts to go. So it's good to have a few projects in mind that you could use this for. Really good tool here. All right, next up, I have a tabletop game. I don't know about any, any of you, but I've certainly been doing a lot more gaming at home. Things that lift my spirits, keep me entertained, and possibly keep me involved with friends if I do it online. So, this game here is called Side Effects. It's put out by Pillbox Games, who makes just phenomenal games. I enjoy all of them that come out. This one is based on mental illness, so, you get dealt cards that are different disorders, say things like madness, depression, anxiety, gambling addiction, so on and so forth. These make up your psyche. So these are cards that are laid face up in front of you for everyone to see. If you would like to treat one of your disorders, you need to use either a therapy card or treat it with a medication. So if I wanted to treat my madness, with a medication. I could try and treat it this way, but I have to keep in mind that it's gonna open me up to some of the side effects. Here, this side effect is tremors. So if another player then wanted to dig at me, they could play tremors on top of me. Now I have to, to treat my tremors. So it's kind of a fun game. There's a little bit of a back and forth there. If you really wanna take a dig at somebody, there is a, you're having an episode card. It forces that player to have whatever side effect they have showing at that time. Now, 
This game can be fun where you're taking digs at people. It can be a little mean in that way, but it's all done with a sense of trying to open up the conversation about mental illness and shedding light on that. They have a note at the back of the manual here talking about how much they support uh, better advocacy and availability of mental health resources. Uh, they hope to facilitate open and honest communication about these issues, and they even have a list of links for more resources. So it's done and fun, but with a good message behind it. If you are a fan of side effects, I also recommend their new game, Mud. Now their Kickstarter just closed. Uh, I'm happy to say it did well above and beyond what they were hoping for. Uh, it is a political card game where you are trying to influence an election as a wealthy mogul so that it comes out in your favor. You try and collect voters, you sway things, you can play mud cards where you're slinging mud at other people, you have scandals. It's a lot of fun. Now, since that Kickstarter just closed, obviously you can't exactly back it right now, but I have it on good authority. If you reach out to Pillbox Games, hello at pillboxgames.com, then you can still get in the door before, uh, before that has passed you by. Next up is actually just an encouragement to try and support any of your local maker spaces. Here in San Francisco, there's a wonderful place called Workshop SF. I think they also have a location in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I have been a fan of them for years. I've taken a lot of in-person classes with them and now they're offering online classes. So if you have a local place that you know is struggling, please, I implore you, try and utilize them. If they have online classes, support them any way you can. If not, there is this place workshop and they are doing online classes. Because they're online now, it means that anywhere across the country you could participate. So. Recently, I did a macrame class with them. So you basically have a Zoom uh, instructor with other classmates there. They mail you your supply kit and you follow along with them. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, I'd much rather just watch a YouTube video. I could work at my own pace. I wouldn't have to you know, pay extra money for that. Here's a few things to keep in mind. One, the money you pay goes to support these people who are making these wonderful pieces of content and just trying to better their community. Two, there's not a lot of way to overstate how nice it is to have classmates. Being able to see other people making something, maybe a choice they made, it's always giving you inspiration, it's teaching you more as well. And three, being able to ask questions in the middle of a YouTube video is just like, that would be so nice. So having someone on Zoom that you can just stop and be like, hey, I didn't catch that. Can you, can you show me that again? Or no matter how many times I do it, it's just not coming out right it's invaluable to have somebody there to answer your questions, to walk you through it. And at the end of the day, you still wind up with a new skill and something probably cool in front of you that you just made. Like I said, I've done a macrame class, I've done a lino cut printing class, I've done um, air dry ceramics, watercolor, the possibilities are endless. So keep an eye out. Again, try and support someone local, and if you can't, support this awesome shop. All right, my next favorite thing is actually for another website called bookshop.org. Now on the surface, it might just look like an online bookstore, but the thing that's really cool about this website is you can choose any of your favorite bookshops, your local bookshops, and it will contribute money to them. Now it's sort of the same way as if, say you go to your local small bookshop, you want a book, they don't have it. They say, it's okay, I can order it for you. This is the system that they would use that for. So they're still spending money in this outside site, but they're still gonna be making money off of that. So I have a few bookshops that I've been really sad I haven't been able to keep frequenting. Even though some of them have reopened, I'm trying to be responsible, trying to minimize exposure to anybody. So I will take turns. A lot of times I'll say, okay, if, if I were going in person, which bookshop would I buy this book from? So then I go online, I search for them, I order a book through their version of bookshop, and then I'll go to the other shop and order something else. So for example, City Lights Bookshop in San Francisco, it's one of my all time favorite bookshops. They were struggling when they first closed for the pandemic. We all gave to the GoFundMe page, it really helped them, and you can still order books through them from bookshop.org. So 
I've constantly got a huge cart going <laughs> in one of my open tabs saying, okay, oh, I need this book too, I need this book too. So it's a nice way to know, again, you can support any local businesses that are struggling while still being responsible and still nurturing your need for more books. So I highly recommend that. Think of at least one local bookshop, if not multiple, and help them out. All right, guys, those are my favorite things of 2020. Obviously, there's a lot of things to be thankful for right now. I just hope that all of you are having a great, safe holiday season. And let me know what some of your favorite things are. Bye.